I would like to ask the next three to come up. We're going to kind of sit and fill the stage a little, um, and I'll introduce you as you come up. We're going to have three perspectives now about companies um, that are taking the lead. They're going ahead and doing some things before there's a price on cover and before all the financing in place is in place, before everything is lined up. Um, do you mind? No, it's okay. It doesn't matter. I'll go down here. It doesn't really matter. Um, so let me see what order we're in. Okay. Sitting to my left is Mr. John Willard, the VP of Energy for Google. Uh, to his left is uh, Mr. Peter Agnafiel, Chairman and CEO of IKEA. And then we have Mr. John Bryant, Chairman and CEO of Kellogg. Thank you all for coming. We're going to um, ask each of you to um, take a few minutes and explain, um, I guess, some exciting news or the beginning some, of some exciting news. I think we're going to start with you, John, if you can head up to the, to the dais. Thank you. Okay, so uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, over the last couple of days, what I've been uh, interested to hear from people uh, at, at these forums is the level of, in, of interest from business. I want to do is give you a sense of three reasons why uh, working on carbon neutrality, sustainability, addressing climate change is absolutely essential for the Kellogg Company. The first one is fairly straightforward. It's in our DNA. Mr. Kellogg was one of the great philanthropists of his generation, gave all of his wealth away, created the Kellogg Foundation. They're still one of the largest charities in the world and the single largest shareholder of the Kellogg Company. And that foundation continues to give away about $400 million a year to children's education, health care around the world. That is still very much in the DNA of the Kellogg Company. But importantly, the second reason why it's absolutely business essential for us is because consumers absolutely care about their food, about where it's grown, about ensuring that we are following the right practices to create a sustainable environment, a, con a sustainable platform for feeding what is a growing population in the future. Consumers want to know where their food come from, comes from and what happens to it. And then the third reason is a concern about the state of our supply chain, of our food supply chain. It is a fragile supply chain. One or two weather shocks within this supply chain could very easily not just dramatically increase the price of grains, but make the transfer of grains across national borders extremely difficult. We've seen it happen already a few years ago when Egypt closed its borders due to food riots and they did not allow the, tr the exportation of rice anymore. A company like Kellogg's, we were, make, we, were, we were making Rice Krispies in Europe with that rice from Egypt. So three obvious reasons for why we're absolutely committed to making progress in this, in this space. Several years ago, uh, we would have had all the commitments you expect of the Keller Company around greenhouse gas, water, waste, etc., within the four walls of our plants. And today, we still have those very aggressive goals. We recently announced a new set of goals for 2020 in that space. What we also have is we've taken an end-to-end -end responsibility for our supply chain from the farm all the way to the breakfast table. And in that context, we're also setting ourselves aggressive goals, which we'll, which we'll announce tomorrow, related to the, the two degrees science. Within that, we've committed to working with half a million farmers around the world to adapt climate smart agriculture. Obviously, that will first improve the livelihoods of those farmers, but also improve their yields and ensure that they're following practices that looks after biodiversity of the soil and the health, of the health of the land. In that context, we have a number of programs around the world, whether it be working with farm growers in India, sorry, corn growers in India to plant alternative crops between the rows of corn so they improve the productivity of the corn by as much as 20% and provide another cash crop and improve the biodiversity of the soil. Or whether it be quinoa growers in the upper Andes in Bolivia, where we, work, where we send agronomists to work with the quinoa growers to improve the productivity, the soil health, and provide solar power to those farmers so they can have access to electricity, so both they can check on the prices of their crops and their, and their uh, family can, uh, can study, their children can study at night and improve their education. We also recognize as a company that when a climate shock occurs, and there will be droughts and floods in the future, that it will impact most those who have the least resources to overcome that impact. And so we have a program as a company called Breakfast for Better Days, where we're focused on giving a billion servings away by 2016. We've actually already exceeded that goal within the half the time we set ourselves, and we'll continue to make progress in that area. So it's exciting to be here. 
I believe that there is a major shift going on uh, in the food industry as consumers expect and demand food companies and the industry to take responsibility for the end-to-end -end supply chain. And you're seeing that today in the case of our company. I expect you'll see more progress over the next several years. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bryant. Thank you for, for those, those words. We're, we're eager to hear the rest of the, uh, the goals tomorrow, but that's, uh, it's exciting to hear about the supply chain work. That is really where the, the impacts lie. So thank you.